So if we talk about coding of this, we will say that it is total number of ways to get true as an answer for any string, right? So eventually we will be getting a string s. That is what is given to us and we have to tell total number of ways to get true as an answer. Now as we discussed earlier that we will be writing a helper function. So I will say ways to get true and I will say helper. I will say I need the string. I need the start index. I you can treat as start index. J you can treat as end index. And I will also give a value here. Am I looking for answer for expression to be true or false. You remember we need both ways like how many ways are to, there to get false as an answer and how many ways are there to get true as an answer. Right. So this is the helper. Eventually once we are able to solve this problem, once we are able to get an answer of tij number of ways to get true answer and fij number of ways to get false as an answer. So using these two we can calculate our answer. So this is something that we are discussing and we are talking about it. So what our final answer will be, our final answer wise I will say it will become this total original string 0 s dot size minus 1 is the n index and I will say I am looking for answer for true. Now for this true eventually it will go and recursively call with false also with true also. Let's try to break and think about this problem step by step. So first of all, let's talk about a base case. What is the case where we can give answer immediately? So if our string is, imagine a single T or F. In such cases, this is our base case. We can simply return the answer. In this case, we will say our answer is eventually, uh, in, in first case, number of ways to get true as an answer is 1. Number of ways to get true as an answer here is 0. Number of ways to get false as an answer is 0. And Number of ways to get false the answer is one so that's how we will go and write this now keep one more thing in mind our expression will always be odd length expression because eventually it will be if there is any operator then the length becomes odd because this operator is joining two operands right so that's what we have to keep in mind that means our i and j that we have either they will go inside or they will be far apart from each other, i will be to the left and j will be to the right. So I can say if i at any time is greater than j, in such case we should say there is no possible way to get the answer or to get true as an answer for parenthesization of the expression. Right. Second we can say is if i is j, if they are equal, what does it mean? It means the string is having length only one. Now This is a case where we can return our answer confidently which we are saying is our base case so if somebody is asking if it is true we have to tell how many ways are there to get true as an answer so true answer we can give with if let's say this thing that we are getting the string that we are getting this itself is true then answer is one if it is not true then answer is zero right so this is keep in mind that base case we are handling in this way if we are searching for how many ways are there to give true answer we are returning if these are equal we are returning one if it is not equal to if si is not equal to t we are returning false and same way the other case will become we'll say return false is equal to s of i right so that is our second case where we are looking for an answer to false now this is done our base case now we worry about little bigger strings. So you can say let's worry about a three length string if it is this. Then what we discuss is we are breaking it around this operator. right? Now to break around any operator what we will do is for breaking points we will go with various breaking points. So what I can say is I can say let's say for k is equal to now that break point will exist from i plus 1. Right? If my string starts at i, the character at index i will be the operand, not the operator. And at i plus 1, it will be operator. So what essentially I am doing is, if expression is of the form, let's say f and some operator, t and some operator, and f and some operator again. So what I am doing is, my k is going, k is starting from this index. Then k will move here, then k will move here. 
So when k is here, we will break into two sub problems and we will find the answer. Then eventually when k moves here, we will pass this as the left string, this as the right string. So that is what I am going to do. So if you see k is i plus 1, k is I will say less than j because it has to be less than the right side and I will say k is equal to k plus 2. And keep in mind why I am moving k two, time, two steps at a time is because k is moving that partition where we are breaking. Right. So this is what we are doing. So now we will have two parts of the string. One will be the left part, another will be on the uh, will, will be the right part. So what we want to do, we want to figure out four answers with this recursive call. Just a moment. Yeah. So what I'll do is I'll figure out how many ways are there to get left answer as true. So this is what I want to figure out. The left part of the string. Now if you see if I'm breaking it at k. In given string, if I am breaking it at this operator, copy and let's say x. If I am break, breaking this operator, so this will be my first string, this will be my second string. So if this index is k, my first part of the string is i to k minus 1. This is what I can say. These are the bounds of this part. And this part has the bounds k plus 1 to j. So this is something that we have to keep in mind when we are making recursive calls. So I'm saying let's call this function and say a given string starting from i and the ending will become k minus 1 here. And I'm saying how many ways are there to get the answer of this expression as true. So if you see this is the left part that I'm taking here. Same way I can also say for left part to be false also I'm looking for the answer. And I'll say int right true how many ways are there to get the right expression as true so let me put it this way and right side of the string will change from k plus 1 to j and same way let me make a copy of this and say right part to get false so this will become false here now once we get these four answers our final answer that we are calculating eventually that I will say our answer, I will take a variable for this answer and this answer we will add to it because these are the various breaking points that we are putting. First time we are breaking at i, i plus 1, the k is there, then k will change. So it is like if you remember the tree that we formed, so what we are doing is if our string is let us say a operand b operand c operand d. So what we are doing is first we are saying let's break it around a operand b c d. So this is the break that we are talking about here. This answer plus the answer of a b and c d. This will be the second answer plus answer of a b c and d. So this summation is required that's why I am taking answer as a variable here. Now this answer is something to which we will keep adding. So, and that, that addition will happen based on the operator. So, here we will say, like, based on operator, calculate answer. So, for now, what I will do is, for simplicity, I will assume, let us say our operator is, let us say my operator is bitwise XOR. So, I can say in this string, at 8th character, if this operator that I have is XOR, then how many ways are there to get true as an answer here or false as an answer here. So we have to still we have to calculate both the answers because we are returning uh, based on this parameter here. right? Now let us say if operator is XOR and we, have, we are asked that our answer we have to tell is for true. How many ways are there to get true as an answer? So what we are seeing is we are having four parts available. So left part true and left false this is given and right true right false this is given operator we know is xor here so how many ways will be there to get true as an answer if you really see number of ways of getting true here and number of ways of getting false here this should get multiplied because these ways will give us true as an answer plus 
left false and right true will also give us that answer. So this is to keep in mind that we will be considering both these values. So I will say if this is true, I will say answer is equal to, I will say left true into right false plus right true into left false. So this will give me the answer that I am looking for. right? And if it was not true, we were looking for an answer of false, then we will calculate that answer also. So answer becomes, it will be left true and right true. Because if both left and right are true, we will get false as an answer. Same way left false into right false. So this is the way to calculate the answer for the XOR operator. Same way we will have to write logic for the other two operators. So if this is OR, then there will be different answer. Else if, okay, here it should have been else if. And here in last case, I can blindly assume that this will be AND case only. AND operator case. So we need to add the value of that to this answer. So I can say it will be answer plus because we have to keep doing it for every possible k. So that's why we are adding this value here and we are not just assigning it. Okay, so this is how we will be calculating this answer and once this answer is calculated, then we will be returning that full answer. So just see the approach that we discussed, we are converting that into code. Now I'll quickly uh, write the code for this and then we will validate our code also. So now if it is OR operator, so I will check if we are searching for a true answer for OR, what we will do is true answer will come from answer is equal to answer plus our here it is if it is OR operator. Now we have to figure out how many ways are there to get true here and false here and let's say true here and false here. So this is what left side and this is right side. So if you see if here it is true then this will get multiplied with this also and this also because or will make this true right and false will get multiplied only with this true. So this is something we have to keep in mind. So these three multiplications will give us that answer. So I will say here left false into right true plus left true into right false plus if it is left true and right is also true this eventually will give us the true answer for or operator right and same way if it is if we were searching for false as an answer then false answer with or operator will be given by answer is equal to answer plus when we will get false in case if it is OR operator. So it will be eventually, can I say, left is false and right is also false. Because only in that case we are going to get a false answer. Otherwise we are not going to get a false answer. Now same way, let's go here and say, if we are looking for answer for true, the answer will come true only if both left side and right side are true, right? So it will be answer left true, into right true because this is and operator so this is how we will get the answer now false answer in case of and we will get only when false answer will come when either left is false or right is false or both are false right so this will be answer plus left false into right false plus left false into right true plus left true into so these are the ways to get the answer. So once we have added in this loop, if we keep accumulating the value of answer, eventually we can return that answer over here. So that will be our answer for this function. right? So now we have calculated the answer considering all the breaking points, all the places where we could have broken. Okay, let's submit this code here, the ways to parenthesize this expression. So here, let me change the language to C++. So the function we had written, let me paste here. 
place to get true this is the function that i wrote so i'll just use my helper and get rid of the original function so let me put it here and let's get rid of this so our function will get called and now if we submit let's go ahead and see so there's some error s was not declared in the scope so okay here the input that is coming is a so i'll change it to s let's submit now so ideally if you see this is still a brute force solution it's not optimized dp solution we are just using the backtracking solution so we'll we may have to optimize it if the test cases are bigger and we see the second test case is actually a dp test case so we can quickly go and convert this solution into a dp solution 